Call to order the Board of Supervisors meeting for Monday, December 18th at 7 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. How about establishing a quorum? Ms. Watt. Supervisor Linda Wade. Present here. Chairman Dan Wolfel. Present here. Supervisor Mark Hain. I'm just here. Supervisor Jeannie Vogel. Yes, I'm here. Supervisor Derek Janiel. Here. All right. Great start. Welcome to all of you. All right. How about a meet and greet? We'll start with Santa on the front row. Oh, oh. Well, I really am Jim Mitchie. <laughs> but don't tell me. Anybody. That's good. <laughs> Brandon Robin Robinson, Executive Director of the Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission. Thank you. I'm still Dale Vogel. Whitney Rear Drive. It's encouraging. <laughs> Brett Gillett. Billy Inspector. Uh, Hughes Edel, District 14, uh, County Board Supervisor. Mm -hmm. Craig Nellis, 4216 Highway 57. All right, and over on the video capture. And Derek Meese, that's how she be wrote. And Lang Chapman, Blue Drive. All right, thank you and welcome and I'm glad you're all here. This will be our last meeting this year, I hope. <laughs> I could be wrong. Uh, public participation. Anyone have anything they'd like to speak about that's not on our agenda already? All right. <laughs> Why don't you take that with you? And I'm sure Brandon will need it anyhow. I recommend renewal of the clerk treasurer's contract for reasons I don't need to get into. <laughs> recommend renewal of the clerk treasurer's what? Oh, it's not even on our agenda tonight, but thank you for sharing that. Oh. We might make yes, an exception, it but I think it's... I know, I know. <laughs> yes, it is. I get nervous. I know it's on the agenda. <laughs> the committee's missing, but the agenda item here is still on. All right, thanks, Jim. Anyone else? Anyone else? Right. Thank on. you, Jim. <laughs> All right, I assume that our agenda has been properly noticed. The agenda was properly noticed. So a motion to approve it would be in order? I'll move to approve the agenda for this evening, December 18, 2023, as noticed. Motion by Linda, second, second. by Jeannie. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Approval of the minutes. The Board of Supervisors meeting from November 27th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the Board of Supervisors meetings from November 27th, 2023. Second. Motion by Mark, second by Derek. To approve the minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, off to pending business. Um, give you a quick update on the orchards. Uh, they have agreed and stipulated to the fine amount. Um, the paperwork has been sent up by our attorney, and they will be making a six payments, I believe. Correct, Amy? That's correct six payments so that issue has been resolved um, as you know that's dragged on for a fairly long period of time and what's the amount oh. of the payments mr fifteen thousand over what period of time six months six months okay yes. we went back and forth they and the gist of it was is we ended up at 15 mm -hmm. um, which i think resolved the issue in both of our cases mm -hmm. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Could you move the mic in front of you, please? There you go. Thank you. Mike should follow me. Should we get a new one? Okay. Uh, shower Road update. And I think Gladdy said that he has a map of Shower Road that he might want to bring up. But just as a refresher, a few months back, um, we got into a conversation with the county. Well, let me back up from that. I think you all remember that the conversation is we either do something to rebuild Shower Road, and as an alternative, we came up with an idea to see if we could straighten and move Shower Road. Uh, <clears throat> and in doing that, we required the support of the DNR to do an archaeological survey and also an uh, environmental survey looking for plant species, etc., etc. 
What you see up there is on the bottom, which you only see part of the road, is the existing shower road going down and then it slips off the map and comes back up towards the parking lot. And what you see in the gray area is the planned new route of Shower Road, which comes in just briefly after the intersection of Clark Road, uh, Clark Lake Road and WD, and comes in uh, across the DNR land and then into the bottom of the parking lot at Cave Point Park. Uh, takes out some of the curves, or maybe a few curves in, and in depending on what's up, but as a result of the survey that the DNR did, they did not find anything to prevent uh, us from using this route. Now, they may move the route a few feet one way or the other, depending on trees, rocks, or something else. They have, I think, a 40-foot wide corridor to work within. Um, we participated in that, in that uh, initial engineering study. We split the cost with the county, um, and now they've come back that we were basically waiting for the next step in the DNR. <coughs> And now to the point that they want to go and have the final engineering analysis done by Stantec. Um, and I'll just read, I think it's in your packet as well. Final engineering, an additional $4,500. So we, they're asking us to split that uh, with them uh, so that they can get that staked out and then they'll get some uh, hard estimates on the cost of construction. And that ash will also give us the county's estimate on construction, so we'll have two to compare to. And then from there will be a process of trying to acquire some cash, mostly through grants if possible. Uh, and it's good probability that this could actually uh, move out to a 25 project, depending on the timing of who's got the funds uh, and or grants. The way the county sees this is we would need to bring our section of the existing road from WD up to where the split or the fork is, up to county standards, much like our town standards. And then we would participate in the cost of the new section of road going into the parking lot. The eventual outcome would be that we would then relinquish our ownership of the road giving it to the county and they would maintain it in the future. The portion of Shower Road that goes north of the parking lot, basically the area where all the people go, that strip that goes up to the Jacksonport town line would more than likely um, just be blocked with limestone boulders on both ends uh, so people could walk up there or whatever, but would stop all the traffic and any need for a turnaround or anything else. So um, just wanted to let you know that uh, I gave them pretty much a verbal commitment, unless someone here has an objection, that we would participate in that cost share. And now is your opportunity to say yay or nay. Yay. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yay. So the total, in, the total engineering then, adding in that, was like 16500 Correct. So we're splitting that 50-50. Yep. We'd be in around $8,000. Eight, eight <clears throat> when it comes to the actual um, reconstruction, um, is that going to be... Is there going to be a cost share there? Um, I know that um, it's probably a good candidate for either um, trip yeah. that or yeah. the TRID funds, either right. discretionary or supplementary. Um, Thad thought it was a good um, candidate for that. So No, it, it's definitely, let's put it this way, if it's our project, it's never going to happen. I mean, right. it, the, yeah. it would consume most of our budget for road construction. So, so, yes, I believe it will be a shared cost with hopefully a lot of grant dollars and that's one of the reasons too in the most recent conversation that this could slip into 2025 but uh, mm -hmm. they need this they're saying it could uh, I think you were at the meeting would they say maybe 60 to 90 days at the outside that they get back to us yes so early spring we'll know what the cost is and then at least we can see where they go and the county work will pursue a lot of that for us and you'd have to have an engineers um, study anyway to make application Station. for any of those funds. So yep. So all right. Uh, I will. Money well spent. You want to, Amy? Just make a note of it and shoot that a note in the morning and tell them we're good to go. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Uh, there's all the detail in there, by the way, if you're interested in Stantex, what they're going to provide, etc. The map. So for your perusal. All right. 
Next item on our agenda, we've invited Brandon Robinson, who is with the Bay Lakes Regional Planning Commission, to come and address us. Um, as a refresher, our dues payment is due in the next 30 to 60 days. Um, roughly right, just under $7,000. It's uh, based on our valuation in the town. And we had a discussion with internally at budget time as to, you know, what value will we receive for that in the next few years? And so we wanted to give Brandon an opportunity to share that with us. So I will give you the floor, Brandon. All right. Yes, thank you. My name is Brandon Robinson. I'm the executive director with Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission. Um, ultimately, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with regional planning commissions, uh, there are nine regional planning commissions in the state of Wisconsin uh, that were set up in the late 60s, early 70s to assist particular regions of the state with planning services, whether it be long-range planning, uh, zoning, transportation, economic development, so on and so forth. So ultimately, if communities didn't have the capacity or didn't have a planning department, um, the Regional Planning Commission was there to really kind of establish to take care of those services for the organizations. Um, we've been around since 1972, so 50 years of planning within an eight county region. Those of you uh, on the board do have that folder in front of you that kind of there's a, a quick summary sheet in terms of the services that we offer. The front side is just kind of a quick synopsis. The back side is the different services that we offer to all 185 units of government that we serve in Northeast Wisconsin. Um, everything from community planning, uh, we updated the town's comprehensive plan. Uh, gosh, what was that, Linda? Was that? 2019, 2019. was finalized. Um, we assisted the town in getting a coastal management grant for that particular project update. So not just long range planning, but we also assist with grant writing, grant administration, help with mapping and visualization, transportation services. We, we assist the town every other year in conducting the pavement surveys and ratings for the town roads, uh, assist with economic development services, as I mentioned earlier, grant writing, grant administration, uh, as well as some environmental planning. Um, one of the biggest things that is a little different, each of our communities, um, I should say each one of our eight counties, uh, become members by paying a, an annual levy. And that levy is based off of the equalized value uh, of the property within that county, based off the, that year's uh, tax valuation. So ultimately, uh, the county pays a membership every municipality within that county becomes a member automatically. In the case of Door County, uh, the county is not a member. However, 12 of the 19 jurisdictions within the county are members of Bay Lake Regional Planning. Each of them pays their equalized value on an annual basis. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, the town of Sebastopol is slightly under $7,000. Um, so what valuation or what do you get from that from our services rendered basically i kind of rattled off a number of things that we do obviously that's not all encompassing that's not every year that you're getting six thousand seven thousand dollars worth of services um the biggest thing is we will always reach out to the communities to determine what it is that they need for updates most of it is usually grant writing most of it is um some instances within Door County, uh, we are looking at updating zoning ordinances, we are looking at updating comprehensive plans. We're updating three comprehensive plans within the, within the county right now at a local jurisdiction level, uh, as well as updating three zoning ordinances within the county. Uh, obviously it's a little different in this case, uh, given the fact that you are under county zoning and you have an updated comprehensive plan. So, um, I would basically indicate to you that the, one of the stipulations that we have in our bylaws is that was recently passed is if a community joins, when Sevastopol joined back uh, roughly over five years ago, uh, there was a stipulation that our board of commissioners was 
not going to allow local jurisdictions within non-member counties to join. We were able to persuade them to allow us to reach out to communities to have that opportunity to work with our staff from the Regional Planning Commission on long-range planning efforts. Uh, when the majority of the communities in Door County joined, the bylaws were then changed to indicate that if a, a community joined the Regional Planning Commission, if you at one point in the future were to drop out, you would not be able to join in the future as a local jurisdiction. The only way that we would be able to serve the community's needs would be is if Door County joined as an official member. At that point, every local jurisdiction would be a member of the Regional Planning Commission. You'd be able to utilize the services that we provide. Um, that's kind of the long and short of it at this point. Um, in terms of the value that we offer, um, I know, you know it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Every year is different. Um, you have planning studies that are out there. You have a number of studies that are out there with regard to land use planning, uh, land implementation, transportation planning efforts. Um, we're always available to you as being a member of the Regional Planning Commission. We're always all available to offer technical assistance through those dollars. Um, meaning, if you needed us to come to a meeting, being here tonight, obviously it's not technical assistance, but if you needed us to facilitate a meeting or go through long-range planning, update a component of your comprehensive plan, you do have a story map component of your comprehensive plan, that is that online component. We would update that at no cost to you. Uh, for instance, as census numbers have changed and population projections and housing projections will change, hopefully in the near future here, we'll have some projections uh, that will go out to 2050. Uh, we would be able to update those components of your document on the fly because it is an online component. We wouldn't charge the town anything for that. Um, so it's those, those, I guess, on the fly updates that would be needed. Anything else that you'd be needed, we'd be able to come at, at no cost. Now, if we came up with a particular product, if we were doing, for instance, an outdoor recreation plan update for the community, we would offset the cost of, of doing that or doing that outdoor rec plan with your levy dollars, uh, kind of supplementing that cost as well. That's just an example. Mm -hmm. um, same thing when we, wrote the com when we wrote the grant for the comprehensive plan through coastal management, uh, that was at no cost to the town. Um, I forget what the award was on that, maybe $12,000, $13,000, I think, uh, in terms of the grant award. So those are just some of the <coughs> items that are out there. As I said, every year is different. It, it's really in, it's up to the town in terms of what you would need for updates. Annually, one of the biggest things that we do is we send out a survey for projects that might be needed. I know Amy has, has filled that out a couple times. Annually, we send that out and we look to see what sorts of projects that you, that we could help out with, whether it's pickleball courts and getting funding for pickleball courts or um, looking to update a particular document that you have from a long range planning perspective. So that's one avenue that we utilize to reach out to our jurisdictions to understand where we can help you. Um, that's not always the case. I mean, some of those things are kind of far-fetched, but some of those things are immediate as well, so we can help out with those particular items as well. Um, I guess that's really all that I have. I, I'm open to any questions. I do appreciate you inviting me to have this discussion this evening. I think um, I'd like to have more of these interactions with boards, um, not just at the local level, but at the county level as well. So. Uh, questions from the board? I have a few, but anyone? I think you might uh, maybe ask the one I'm going to ask. Um, do you have any um, analytical data that tells you how many people actually look at our storybook online or anything like that? I'm just wondering I think if people we are can, actually We can pull at that up. I think there was a point in time uh, that that was actually the most viewed component of our website. Um, not just by probably you as a, as a group, 
for a town, but I think your neighboring jurisdictions, we actually were getting hits from as far south as Missouri looking at the story map. It's mm -hmm. something that was kind of cutting edge when you guys took mm -hmm. that initiative to do that. It was you were one of the first mm -hmm. communities to really kind of push that out there. Um, and there's a lot more communities doing that now. <coughs> Okay. I have some questions I'd be happy to ask. Uh, I get more emails from miscellaneous government agencies regarding potential grants than I could possibly read in my lifetime. I can't even, after a cursory, frankly, tell you what half of them would I apply for or could I apply for. Are you a filter for that, that, that we could, I mean, are you engaged in getting all of these things so that you could say to me, hey, I think there's a grant here that might help us on Shower Park. Because as I read through these, I mean, literally, I can get two, three a week. And uh, you know, I can disqualify the ones that say for Native Americans, a couple. But I mean, after that, it becomes just mind boggling. So is that something that you guys are engaged in today that you can come full circle and say, hey, you should be looking at this? That's, that's one of our bigger components in terms of assistance to communities. Obviously now in today's day and age, funding is vital <coughs> for virtually anything that you're doing. We actually have a funding portal. I'm not sure if you've had a chance to look at our website. We do have a funding portal that is one of the more robust funding portals that's out there right now. Um, Economic Development Administration out of Chicago's region basically said it's one of the more impressive portals that's out there. We update that portal on a bi-weekly basis. So if new grants come out, we pop those up. Any grants that are open, we will open those or we'll indicate that those are open and then there, what are the timelines for those? When is the application due? We close those out when those application um, openings are out and outdated. We Let's, will filter that. I know. I know we've had com communications with. I've had communications with Supervisor Wade as well as as um, uh, Amy to go through some funding opportunities that are out there. That's kind of those hit or miss. But you're right. There are a ton of grant opportunities out there. But you're you're basically don't get me wrong. But you're basically reposting what I get. We're reposting. Or are but, you? We're reposting, but we're also trying to push out there what's available. There's, there's probably 75% of those grant opportunities is not even, most of the communities are not even, um, they're not even eligible well, for. Right. I mean, that's part of the problem. Correct. After you read 50 of them, you go, I, you know, yeah. do I spend another hour trying to discern this? Correct. So, okay. So would we be further off not looking at the portal and contacting you guys with our specific needs? And our, you know, like the plans, would that be easier for us? It is, because we can navigate through the, the laundry list, if you will, or the grocery list of funds that's available and whether or not you meet the criteria to hit those Before funds. we even start them. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that most, of the, most of the requirements, as you peel it back a couple, I mean, it's just like, excuse me, I, I don't have a week to do this. So, yeah. Um, so, I mean, that would be a benefit, like, particularly when you look at something like, Shower Road, which we expect to, to run. It's probably a week, every week we will get hit up by at least four or five individuals to ask about grant funding, and then we have to weed through the applications, again, dependent upon what the project might be. Okay, so we probably have underutilized you with that res in, in that regard. Um, Not after tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned the county versus the towns. Um, I'm curious of the, you said 12 of 19 in the county. Mm -hmm. So the remaining seven, how many of them are zoned and who are they? Would you know? Or can you provide us that? How many are zoned? Oh. What I'm wondering is, is are the people that are participating county under county zoning or not county zoning? The ones, I mean, are... It's, it's a mixture. It is a mixture. I know Jacksonport uh, is county zoned and they're a member. Um, just Gardner is not county zoned, and I believe they are uh, fairly Gardner numbered. Union. So it's kind of a mix. Gardner's mm -hmm. not county zoned. Union Union is not county zoned. Um, we've had you know discussions working with Union right now, as well as having discussions with Gardner to update their zoning. Um, however, you know a lot of our work recently has been with yourselves, Jacksonport, Gibraltar, 
who are under county zoning. Uh, same with Town of Washington. Uh, we're doing a comprehensive plan for them as well. Yeah. I'm only thinking of the uh, opportunity that might present itself through Wisconsin Towns Association through a meeting where you could uh, get at the remaining towns, possibly to get them to participate to the extent that then the county would decide either, either we pay them through the county, we pay you through the county, you know, so you have this umbrella where you could potentially reduce um, the individual cost and at the same time maybe provide assistance for the remaining seven towns or villages that are not members. I did bring that up at a recent meeting. I don't think it was our last one, but the one before. Yeah, was, and the um, when the town of Gibraltar jumped on and the town of Jacksonport, I think there were like three or four towns that jumped on there. And I specifically asked them if they felt there was value, and they said yes. So. Okay. Well, of course, they were be. in the midst of doing their comprehensive plan updates as well. So it seems to me, Brandon, when we did do our comprehensive update, <clears throat> so we paid our dues to join, and I think they were maybe 4500 4, at, 4, at that point. But then I believe we also paid you for time, correct? You yes. paid the for, dues for, don't for, include yeah. the entire comprehensive so the plan dues, update. Yeah, so the dues, so the comprehensive plan update was a tangible product, which mm -hmm. time, expense, everything that goes with that. Um, one of the thing, the big kickers there is the fact that we didn't charge, you know, let's just put your, your dues were essentially the application mm -hmm. to do the coastal grant, which I, I do I forget the number off the top of my head. Um, how much you were awarded for that project, but it was 50% of the project. Right. So, I want to say it was 7,500. 75, oh. I think you might be right. Isn't it a $15,000 plan? I, I think believe you're right, that's Amy. exactly what yeah. it was. So, there was value added there too, but at the, by the same token, we also did offset uh, a cost, the cost of the plan, because the Regional Planning Commission. Also, we get about 65% of our funding is through state and federal dollars, which means we get a regional transportation mm -hmm. work program, we get Wisconsin coastal management dollars. Mm -hmm. Being a coastal community, obviously, on both sides, east and west, you also saw a cost savings on that document, not just with the grant, but also the different programs that covered that the natural resources component was partially covered by coastal management the transportation component was partially covered by the regional effort that we have and the economic development portion was somewhat subsidized by the eda funds that we get through the chicago office so that helps with the technical assistance side of it as well um okay so if a town opts out of the plan we cannot opt back in Unless but if a county so door county opted out but they can opt back in door county can mm -hmm. jump in at any at point. any time yes they can go in and what, out yeah they, once <laughs> the yeah for all intents and purposes yes um once the county jo once the county if the county were to join you would automatically in. that's and their it's automatic. and their fee or dues or whatever again would be based on equalized valuation of the entire county the entire that would county. be quite a chunk of money well ours is going to go up significantly once we get reappraised That's given the fact right. that we're at around 65 percent right now I, I will say at this point you know our equalized value right now the the rate that it's at is 0. 0.0006 percent of the equalized value that hasn't changed in almost I think it's been eight years now since it's held steady. Obviously, the equalized value has gone up. One of the things, having now, I've been with the organization for 25 years, but I've been the executive director for six months now. One of the things we're looking to do is really find a more creative, not creative, a, a better way to do the annual levy fees based off of it could be based off population, it could be based off equalized value, different alternatives. The other regional planning commissions have different ways of how they come up with annual dues, and we are going to explore that into next year to see how that will change things. Why wouldn't there be a similar fee across all regional planning? <coughs> you, yeah, 
The, the bylaws are different across the nine RPCs throughout the state. Well, looking at the dollars, it's not a one so, size fits all. I'm sorry. That's right. Um, Go ahead. Looking at the dollars, so the dollar amount would be six thousand nine hundred and seventeen dollars for this coming year. Um, we do use you for our uh, Whistler, our pavement rating. So I think if we did hire another engineering firm or whoever to do that, I believe that was around 2500 Correct. And that's probably gone up um, in the last couple of years as well. So now we're looking at roughly $4,500 worth of what can you provide us? What is the benefit? $4,500 worth. We've accomplished so many projects. The bathrooms, we have that underway. We have the pickleballs. Um, courts are pretty much done. Shower Road would be a project, but we've got engineers working on that with, the, with us and the county. So do you foresee a project that we would? Well, the biggest one would be to see if they can find us a grant to use for Shower Road. Because I really, I mean, my preference would be not to spend any more of our normal road construction budget on that, on that project, because it will consume. I mean, we may have to, but I mean, it'll consume a significant chunk, you know, when we have right. to step up to the plate. And wouldn't that be a good candidate from the coastal management program? I mean, it's right by the water, so. Right. Yeah, there, Do you foresee there are that as a, co as a potential? It could be coastal management, it could be transportation funds, it could be anything, you know, if there's any economic development value to it, which again, I don't know the project in general, mm -hmm. but there are value, there are avenues of which we could find ways to get dollars. Mm -hmm. um, right. So can, can a municipality take advantage of two different grants? Can you... Can you double up? Can you get one from coastal management and one from? Yeah, absolutely. So you can do that? Yeah, as long as you're not matching federal dollars to federal dollars, you're okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're willing and able to match the dollars, whatever that might be 50%, 20%, yeah, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. You, you would write that grant for us once we had like the engineering study and estimated costs? Would you write it for us, yeah. or would you just offer guidance? The, the way that the way that you just mentioned it, like we will not do the engineering side of things because we're not we engineers, obviously. But if we have the engineering materials to incorporate into the grant, we would write that grant if the material was there. Mm -hmm. Oh, would that be on time and materials then, or time? That would be probably so in addition time. to the Again, A lot of that is contingent on how how if the if the grant application is robust from the standpoint that it takes maybe 80 hours to mm -hmm. do it, then there might be something there. But we typically will look at the application. Coastal application is one in general, which we've done so many of those, we can do those pretty quickly. It takes time, but because we're familiar with it. Um, once we become familiar with the application, it, it becomes pretty, uh, it, we would probably be able to do it within, let's say, that uh, under the time and expense of just the, the levy rate and the membership fees that you have, that you've paid. <clears throat> I can be 100, I could probably be 99% certain of that. Can't say any guarantees there, so. Okay. Would we expect to do that in 2024? Depends on the engineering and then it depends on the funding. But I mean, I don't know the grant cycles on these things, but from yeah. what we're experiencing with, with broadband, we could apply today and get it in 25, 26, 27. I mean, yeah. uh, and that, that is uh, an option that we, that we apply for the grant saying, well, we don't need the funds until 2025 or 2026. Or we don't, even if we need the funds, we can't get it prior to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, there, are, there are transportation grants that we write that the community won't see those for, uh, you know, at least two years. Mm -hmm. It's just the funding wouldn't be available. You could, and you could indicate that, that you wouldn't need to move ahead until mm -hmm. 2026. And I would assume that they would look favorably upon partnerships, the county, the DNR. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I think that's an opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I mean, for my money, and it's ours, I'd say that we, you know, I signed the check, we could give them the check. It's up to you. Um, but I think we could roll another year and see what the impact is on some of the things that we're chasing and see what happens with them. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, that would that'd be okay with me. I, I, will, I will just, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there. One of the things that I'm, as being in the leadership role now at the RPC, I am going to make a conscious effort to go meet with the county to see what their uh, feelings are with regard to membership, given the fact that 12 of the municipalities are members at the given time. Um, we're going to have a, a more in-depth discussion about how we can collaborate and maybe build that partnership to see if maybe it is a doable effort. So the municipalities are not having to foot the bill to be independent members and you have more collaboration and a unified effort between the Regional Planning Commission and Door County overall. So that is one of my first, one of my big things in the first quarter of, of next year. Well, I think that'd be great because not only that, as you and I were chatting just before the meeting, working off of our equalized value. I had an extremely bad experience with that when we were working under a fire contract with the city and it took us years to, to break out of that mold. And uh, I'm fortunate that they felt the same way and were able to, to adapt to that because with the growth along the lake shores, as you can well imagine, and we go through this, you know, we could be significantly higher next year. So we'll look forward to any opportunities that you might have to to reduce that as yeah. it, as you move forward so and by all means don't hesitate to reach out to us that's what we're there for um if you're looking for funding I mean, it's it's just a phone call or an email <coughs> okay. and we'll be happy to help out all right anything else from anyone the dues are always like if you did reach out to the county um are they always on an annual basis it is annual mm -hmm. I will say this, if the county were to join, just so that you're aware, if the county were to join in 2024 and you paid your membership fees, you would get reimbursed your dollars. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, we'll have to chase them a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have two county board members. <laughs> we have two county board members who are extremely influential. Oh, oh they're hiding. They're hiding, yes. <laughs> Is that why you sat so far back tonight here in the hearing aids yeah. for this whole no, I was coming. <laughs> very, Thanks. very good concerning. Thank you Thank for coming. You, I appreciate Thanks. it. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Brent. Have a Merry Christmas. Merry no Christmas. obligation to stay till the last dog is on here. Safe drive home. Safe. All right. Next item on our agenda is the selection of a building inspector. This needs to happen this evening because in, uh, what? Nine days, five, Ten four, days, three days, we won't have one. So if there's any candidates out there that are interested in raising a building inspector for the town, please raise your hand. <laughs> any other candidates? Okay. Uh, Seeing none, proceed to vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in your packets, you have had information on uh, Brett Gillett, who's with us this evening, an inspection specialist, and also from e-services from Dave Pinnacle. And since my expertise is far from building inspections, con contracting, carpentry, and electrical, <laughs> I happen to have somebody on the town board that is familiar with that. So I've asked Mark Payne to take this uh, building inspector selection and, and give him the floor to take us through where we should go. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You've pretty much started my conversation for me, but we do have one gentleman here, we had two come forward. Um, I've been in the trade since 96, full time 97, 98, and I've worked with both of them. Um, I have a little stronger relationship with one than the other. Um, one I've worked with quite frequently, the other one I have not. I have a personal preference, but I'm not gonna say that quite yet. Um, we have all their information, we have the contracts, we have the fee schedules. I believe we're looking for a one-year contract and then after the year see how everything goes and go long term after that i'm pretty sure that's the town is looking for um i don't know if we should ask questions first if we should have seeing that brett's the only one here have him speak first you're the you're if the there's questions if there's questions for me that i can answer before we 
go through, or should I, I think let, we should have Brett give us a little, Brett yeah. at least have give a little first. talk if you have some points of interest for us, please. Well, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. um, so, I've been I've been inspecting since two thousand. You know, as a contractor before doing electrical work, actually. Um, I started with independent inspections, and I was actually your inspector back in the early 2000s. Went on my own in 2010. Um, I know that one of the questions that a lot of the towns have been asking me if I can handle it. Well, um, so far, right now, I have 16 communities in Door County. I start in Egg Harbor the first of the year. Um, I started in Sturgeon Bay, so I've been kind of working, transitioning with Brett, Timmy, through all these communities, trying to make sure that you know, we're working together here. Um, so as far as can I handle it right right now, my wife has always been working with you. She, she does all the paperwork at home, the billing, all that. Um, I just hired my son and he's more of the business side of it. And he's been helping with paperwork and plan reviews and basically everything that's done in the office so I can get out in the field and do my job and do inspections. Um, I do have another, my, actually my older son also has his building license and he helps me out when I need it, but he's a full-time deputy sheriff for the county, so he kind of keeps busy doing that. Um, I do have two, one guy that, um, he's retired from Appleton and he has all his license and he helps me, he fills in when I need it. Like last year I had a, went on vacation and prior to that I had knee surgery, so I was off for six weeks and he filled in for me while I was doing that. So he's. He doesn't really want to work full time yet, but he will fill in. And as of right now, um, I actually had a guy arrive with me last week, and he's in his currently working on his license. So I have two guys that are interested. Um, building inspections coming to be just you know it's hard to get people, just like contractors. So with these two guys coming on board, hopefully that'll help out, and we'll go from there. So I, you know, like I said, I got 16 communities now here in Door County, and. And we got we got the manpower to handle it. Linda, do you have some questions? I have a few questions. <laughs> um, the two part-time people that you currently have, Brett, um, are they your employees or or are they independent contractors? Well, they're they're independent contractors. Okay, because as an independent contractor, would they be covered under your liability insurance? Yes. Yes. They are? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. All actually, right. actually, Brett Timmy's guys were all independent contractors because I, I actually was asking him how he did it. So as long as each one has their LLC, they're, they they would be covered under mine or they're all, but the, yeah, the liability would be under my insurance, not the towns. Okay. And um, I noticed like on your fee schedule uh, for anything above and beyond the permitting process, it was um, forty dollars per hour, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So that forty dollars per hour, say we asked you to address some complaints, or maybe we feel that something needs to be raised or or demoed or whatever, mm -hmm. that would fall under that forty dollar mm -hmm. per hour. All yes. Right. And do you have all of the commercial certifications? I have my commercial building, heating, and plumbing, and I, I forgot about that guy. I have a commercial electrical inspector that does all my inspections, Bob Jr. Okay, so you have all the commercial qualifications where you wouldn't have to call anybody from the no. um, that from cap the or any, no. or the state to do any? No. Okay. Um, and then as far as accessibility and like return phone call time, like you said, you have uh, 16 communities now. Yeah. Do you feel that you can yeah. handle that? Yeah, well, haven't had yeah. any complaints about can't get doesn't get back to me. I never had any complaints. Okay. I've never heard of any complaints. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, do I get? Yes, I get back to them if someone leaves me a message. If someone calls me and calls me and calls me from Milwaukee or from Florida and doesn't leave a message, There's I think it's a solicitor. Do. I'm not. Right. I'm not right. going to call them back. Right. Right. Um, but that's one thing that my son right now is helping me out. I actually just leave him my phone so he can answer all the questions and, and when he gets an inspection he types it in my computer and I just go and do it. 
And then um, your contract asks for payment uh, by the 15th of the month. We always don't meet by the 15th of the month, so you I know, assume you're a little flexible yeah, on that. I, yes, if, yes, I knew you because uh, <laughs> actually when I, when I did the contract, I had a lawyer read it, and, he, and most of the contractors that I talk to that are like me, they all have the same thing. But I understand some of these towns have their meeting on the third week of the month, so it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. But and the, for me, it doesn't bother me because I still get paid monthly, right. whether it comes well, comes I up. think we're good for the money. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd be applying if we were. Yeah. And then uh, the contract also um, indicates a two-year contract. Are you yeah. flexible on yes. that? Uh, Mark, you mentioned yes. a one-year, but... I, I had some towns that asked me to do two, and I probably just kept it on there. But mm -hmm. yes, we can switch it to one year. I okay. have some that ask for one year. And then just kind of like an ongoing contract. And then I did notice a couple differences between your proposal and uh, Mr. Enigal's proposal. So um, your contract indicates that if there was a suit, a civil suit or whatever, that you would be strictly responsible for that, correct? Yeah, that you would if indemnify. It was, if right. it was me that caused the right. problem, yes. Correct. Right. You're you would right. indemnify the town, so you would yes. um, protect us. Yep compensate us, make us whole or whatever. Yes. Uh, it was, it was, versus if it was the town's fault, then correct. obviously we would be responsible that for that. That, that, like was a, a, <coughs> that was a difference in one of the contracts. Yes. Yeah. So, and then the fees, of course, were different too between the two um, proposals that yeah. were your, yeah. So I think those were the- So that fee schedule is exactly, it's identical to all the other towns I have in mm -hmm. Northern York. You're not giving us a discount? Uh, oh, not at this time, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thought maybe, you know. <laughs> um, I have one question. Uh, raise orders? Yes. Documentation? I'm assuming that you've done more than your fair share or not? No. I'll be honest with you, three or four that towns have asked for. Um, so I know where you're getting, where you're coming from. So there was. Where um, am I coming from? Well, what happened in Gardner? So what happened there was, and this is a municipal lawyer, and he told me that as a contractor, you should have a contract saying you're doing raise orders. So I told him that my contract says I'll do things that the town asks for. But he said that the, the thing you gotta worry about is if, let's say the owner sues you, that you want the town to be working with you because I, I'm not gonna go to court and use my money to do all that. That well, that's sense? not where I was coming from. Okay, that's good. So, okay. um, <laughs> but I will do raise orders based on, but I always ask that the town's lawyer would help write the letter because it's coming, because the raise right. order is technically coming from the town. You're just right. asking me to go look at that building. Well, I, you know, having had yeah. a humongous experience with the Muscat property across from the mill. Oh, yeah. And, and Brett did mm -hmm. an outstanding I job. I actually talked to him about that. Um, and, and our attorney, Brett, yeah, acknowledge that uh, as well, and we have one or two lurking in the background, and okay. I just want to make sure that that's. I have no problem with what you're saying from a process standpoint. I just want yeah. to make sure that if no, we, if we no, need to if, do that. If, it, if it's a town request, that yes, I will. Okay. Uh, preferably working with your town lawyer, so we make right. sure we get no, all I, the I'm legal things that. correct. You know. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm good with that. Um. We retain ownership of all your work product, correct? Like, I know when, when we dealt with independent inspections and with Brett Timmy, all of the, we, we um, retain ownership of all records and <coughs> copies of per, and per net, permits and documents yeah, and notes and all that. Yeah, when I issue a that. building permit? Right, yes, we those, get a copy of it. Those files are town property. Right, yeah, yep. not my property. Mm -hmm, no. Because on many occasions we do yeah. have to go back and look at those. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we would definitely want well, do you, you those here. Have a filing we do. We ha you have an. Oh yeah, there. Yeah. There's a separate office. Yeah. So they would stay in here. <laughs> yeah. We have filing. We have filing. Yeah. We get filing. Let's just go filing. filing. You can ask Brett if there's a system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, those are all town properties. Uh, the one thing that being in the trades and, and dealing with the, the two inspectors right now, um, the other inspectors' fees are higher than Brett's. Dave's 
his fees are higher on certain things. He's got a couple other fees that Brett does not have. Um, we've noticed that since he's taken over uh, Liberty Grove. So <clears throat> just, a, just a few nuances there. Um, I don't see where that's, that's correct, Mark, because I took, um, for instance, I took 2,750 square foot new single family dwelling, all right? So Mr. Gillett would charge um, $1,150. That includes uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, uh, erosion. So 1150 Using Mr. Enigle's 2,000, again, 750 square feet at 13 cents per square foot comes to $357 plus the plumbing at $137.50 plus electrical plus, plus HVAC plus erosion. Um, I came up with $870. Okay. Well, I, I put them side by side and I came up with a little more with the individual, like the electrical mm -hmm. and the plumbing and those fees were, were higher than, than Brett's. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, um, I mean, do, are we concerned with the amount of fees? No, that are just, as long as they're doing a good job. Well, and then the and other we thing. We retain 10%, so. Yeah. If, they, if they do charge more, we get more. In the end. But <laughs> that's not what we're looking at here. Well, I think, I think the one area that they, maybe that's where you're tracking was, there's a break even where he's a little less versus the other, you know, I, I'm not worried yeah. about it. Yeah, I guess the fees aren't that. Um, I also, I just want to say real quick, uh, Dave Enigle is sick tonight. That's why he's not here. Uh, so that's why he, he didn't show up. I was wondering about that yeah, because he did. He was here he before was, we had the, just the meeting. meeting. Side so. note. All right. Derek, you got any questions, comments? I have heard a few comments from builders, electricians uh, around the county of who they'd prefer. And I have heard they'd prefer you um, you're easier to work with I've also heard it from a family member that you are easier to work with um, at a house in Bailey's Harbor um, I do know your family I went to school with your boys so I think uh, you'd be a good fit for the town Jeannie well I'd, I would just say that um, I, I forget which number it was. Um, in Mr. Enigle's um, contract, it was, if I can find it, um, I think it's something that, Linda, did Linda allude to it? Um, the question that she asked um, Brett oh, on, um, on, the, on the representation, mm -hmm. and the way I read um, Mr. Enigle's contract is that we would be on the book. Yeah. So that, for me, that was, <laughs> that drew the line right there. It was like, no way. <laughs> we should not be responsible or account, you know, for what the mistakes of the inspector. Right. So, yeah. no. So that, for me, was the no right there. And we also, you know, as far as fees wise, they were close enough that that wasn't that much a concern. But that, what, that one paragraph oh, yeah. about um, the the, yeah, I that. that was that was a no go for me. Um, I did notice that Mr. Enigle's hourly, you know, for additional services was at one hundred dollars yeah, more per hour versus forty dollars per hour. Yeah. Um, but I think I would like to see in the contract, you know, that we do retain you want it written. the work product mm -hmm. and. Um, I, don't, I think that's important. You're, you're talking if you the, could add that paragraph. When I issue a building permit, all the, the files, right? Right. I, I don't think I, I don't see, I'm, I'm, re I'm representing the town, so the, all that paperwork is coming okay. to the town of Sebastopol, so right. it's your property. So it's, it's going to stay here anyway. I don't, I don't think I have to put that in there. You're saying you're, it's ordered through the town, therefore mm -hmm. it's yeah. the property. So when people come in, they're getting a building permit for Sebastopol, they're, they're they're writing the check, they're writing everything to Sebastopol. It's just that you hired me to issue that permit for, for a building inspector. You hired Brent to do that. 
No. I'm just looking at the previous yeah. contract that we had, which was very comprehensive. It spelled it all out. Yeah. What we are responsible for providing an office, filing cabinets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, the, the work product. I just don't want to be. Well, if you could, could be some caught added. something. If we have to add, yeah, I can add a line. It's no big or, deal. or an addendum or something like that. Well, he's going to go back into the contract paperwork and change it from two year to one year. Yes. So yeah. if it's not a problem to satisfy, uh, yeah, just let us yeah. just yeah. put a paragraph in there wherever it's appropriate and we can move ahead with it. This is if we hire him. And I, and if. <laughs> I, I don't see any problem. I mean, our previous contract uh, would be an open record anyway that oh, you know, we could, we could yeah. send yeah. them, yeah. Yeah. Open right? Yes. Right. And then you would have the language but for oh. work product and what you know, oh, from Brett's, you mean you're yeah. talking. Okay, mm -hmm. sure, I could put something. If you, that's I guess I just it. feel more comfortable if it was yeah. in writing. Mm -hmm. And we also have a few emails, a couple emails, recommendation that we yes, received. We so. mm -hmm. I, I likewise called a couple of municipalities, and either one of you are qualified to do the job. Hmm. Any other Thank comments you. or questions? Brett, you got anything? No, nope, I don't. Nothing yet. Well, seeing none, I would make a motion to hire <coughs> Brett Gillett of Inspection Specialist LLC on a one year term with the changes we asked for for the year starting January 1, 2024. I'll second. So. We have a motion from Mark and a second from Derek to approve Brett Gillett's company uh, to act as our building inspector starting January 1, 2024. Any other comments, questions? Do we want to vote on this tonight then? I'm just kidding. Yes. Okay. I think maybe. <laughs> you have a motion on the floor. We're not coming back before the 31st. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Time. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Brett. Brett. Uh, See you sooner than later. January 1st, I'm off that day. So just <laughs> 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 Good thing you only gave us a one year contract. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Moving on. So, next item of business is the AT&T contract for broadband. Um, this has been a work in progress for quite some period of time, as you are well aware, including going back to the days of Bug Tussle. <clears throat> we think that we have reached a point in time with AT&T uh, after review by our attorneys and numerous reviews by uh, Jeannie and Hugh and some by myself that we're at a point in time where uh, we will move ahead with the AT&T contract if, if we so decide to do so. Um, <clears throat> I don't have it down on the agenda this evening for a vote and I have it, uh, I have it as such because I really think that we need to discuss and you need to digest a little bit about the financing options because there are many varied and, and somewhat complicated and flexible, I guess. Um, so I'd like to start with your questions on the contract itself and let's resolve that we are good to go on the contract. If we are, I know AT&T is very anxious for us to sign it. I won't sign it until we resolve the financial questions, which I would do by our January meeting, or you'd have an opportunity to review it and discuss at the January meeting. And if we agree to do this, I'd send them something along the lines of a letter of intent saying we've approved the contract, and as a formality, it won't be signed until January until we resolve our financing. So. Um, and Hugh, feel free to come up and grab the mic if you like. You've been closely involved in any discussion here. Um, so <clears throat> I, I assume you've all had a chance to read it. 
Mm -hmm. Let's just start with where your questions might be. Um, anything we need to do will get changed or modified. Linda probably doesn't have any questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How long is the list? Give you a highlighter. <laughs> 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 Did you want me to start? <laughs> no, really, there aren't that many. Okay, page one of the contract. Um, the third whereas par paragraph. Um, where practicable? So, but it's going to be everywhere, right? That's well, why is that in there? Well, I think one of the things that is is not a guarantee is that when you're dealing with like a condo association or whatever, or a private road or something like that, if they're not given permission, they can't deliver. That that would be one thing. Cuity of anything. No, that's else. the typical yeah. uh, challenge is getting easements yeah. with. Uh, in multiple dwelling units, so mm -hmm. apartments, condos, mm -hmm. um, disagreements with folks that live on private roads. There's a number of private roads mm -hmm. in the town of Sebastopol, and again, they you'll see there's language there where they ask, you know, that the town will work, you know, with AT&T in, in those mm -hmm. in those cases. But it's still, if, you know, if those multiple dwelling units, condo associations, etc., you know, don't provide or grant necessary access, okay. there's nothing they can do. All right. Um, and then on page two, so paragraph D, I did add up all those uh, one, two, three, four, five, six payments. Yep. Uh, two million two two hundred twenty-seven thousand three forty-three, 343 well, which is slightly different than when um, you did your PowerPoint in September. It's actually a little bit. It's like a hundred thousand dollars more. I don't know if that should be fifty. Maybe it might be fifty thousand dollars more. Or so, uh, some of the numbers, uh, the, I mean, the, no the numbers are are basically the the seventy thirty split of the of the full seven you know plus million dollars. Mm -hmm. In our public hearing, I believe we also took into consideration the fact that the county is giving us twenty five dollars per e nine one one address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you know that fifty thousand is you know not in their purview, right? That's additional monies. That will subtract off of that two million, you know, our for our financing. Our share. Right. So that'll reduce okay. it even further. Right. Yeah, I think I saw something where they included that in when, there. When are we okay. eligible to get those funds? Um, Do we know? Uh, I think we're eligible now. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Yes. And okay. then um, under paragraph E on page two, uh, paragraph E sub section Roman numeral number two, if AT&T is not awarded the grant funding, the project will continue. So once we yeah. enter this contract, we are bound, correct? Correct. Yes. Whether we get funding or not. Yes. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. We're no going back. We're practical. Yep. No going back. No. Um, and then on page three, paragraph number four, <clears throat> logistical difficulties. <clears throat> Um, it said, should they encounter logistical difficulties not contemplated, that we might be responsible for that? It says, we'll provide customer with an explanation of difficulties and resolution. Resolution as in we pay for it, or? Make a copy for you. Well, <laughs> it also says, um, in addition for multi-unit uh, dwelling units locations, standard practice to secure the access agreement. Um, frankly, I don't know exactly how to answer that. Do you know, do you have a- I have no way to get the, what? I don't have the, the latest copy. Oh. All I have is red lines. Oh, Amy's gonna go get one. Sorry. What do you mean, the latest copy? The latest copy of, the latest yeah. version. It of, says, of the it, if AT&T should encounter logistical right. difficulties not contemplated, then AT&T may, may at its sole discretion revise something else to accomplish cost-effective work around solutions. As long as it doesn't compromise service, I'm okay with it. Thank you. As long as it doesn't compromise their service. Yeah. I, I think that's what they're saying. If there's a problem, they're going to try to work around, do a workaround. Mm -hmm. You know, what problem may come up, I I don't know that. Um, not that the word is, the word in there is not contemplated, so none of us are contemplating. <laughs> uh, and then on page five, P 
paragraph M, assignment. AT&T may assign or transfer this agreement to any present or future affiliate. Do we need to be concerned about that? Well, yeah, I thought the exact same thing. I'm, I would, would say that could affiliate. happen in any, um, comp it would be any an affiliate, company. Affiliate, not any company. Or affiliate. Well, I read the whole thing. It can sell all its assets without the consent of us. Of the cost, yeah, without the consent. Well, let's put it this way. I don't know that we'll get them to budge off of it anyhow. And Tyler, who took a look at this multiple times, did not have any issue with it as recently as Monday when he got back to me. And so I'm assuming that any big company they put that in. You know, is going to have flexibilities, whether we like it or not. Sebastopol may not be able to, to say halt. So, <clears throat> just a in practical considerations, a lot, a lot of times too, the assignment may change from, you know, AT and T North America to AT and T Wisconsin. Right? Oh, I mean, true. if I look at the legal entity that's actually um, involved in this, it's it's, it's really a um, uh, an AT and T Wisconsin company yeah, as opposed to AT and T corporate. And a lot of times they'll change those for, for tax reasons, mm -hmm. but you know, on the end of the, at the end of the day, the day-to-day -day operation is still what the customer normally you know, sees so and feels anyway. So it doesn't preclude them from being acquired or merged with some other right, right, fiber optic, right. And and again, our the, our attorney looked at this yeah. language and it was acceptable to him. Supervisor, wait. If this were a small startup company. When you talk about assignments of contract, I know that was a concern with the previous uh, company we talk, talked about doing contract with. So if it's a, a smaller startup, mm -hmm. uh, private entity, that's usually assignment is, is a much bigger deal. Mm -hmm. That's the only questions I have. This finance option, this was just gonna, handed out tonight. So Dan, I haven't had a Dan chance just to look did at that. It yeah, we're, we're I, I didn't that. Okay. I just want to resolve Dan any, was working on that. I want to resolve any questions on the contract piece. So anyone else have anything in there that needs to be addressed, checked, clarified? Just the, the very last line with the timeline. Yeah, thing. we caught that. <clears throat> um, be the very, what I noticed to you, yeah. that this, and here it still says the timeline is based on. Oh. oh we have to, we know we have to fix that. Yeah. Um, okay, so all we need to do when it, do you want to have her change it? I'm not going to sign this tonight anyhow. Right. Just have her change it and send it back to us? Yep. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to assume for conversation's sake we're good with the contract itself then. I'll sign this at the January meeting. All right. What I want to just touch on, and I, I pussed with this most of the week, Hopefully it doesn't have some major mistakes in financing options. <coughs> and so I'll kind of take you through these and ask for your input on what you like, you don't like, and where you think you want to go. When you look at the AT&T contract, most of what I put before you is based off of, uh, I don't know, I've got the old version in front of me. It's the payment stream. No, I, I, I've got it here. It's uh, invoicing payments, second page D. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it says customer will pay AT&T the amount set forth. Will it submit an invoice, and the customer will pay that invoice amount within 30 days. And then it goes uh, to specifically lay out those amounts over the course of time. And it starts with the grant date. Um, and the grant date in this if you haven't read it completely through there, they are applying for a grant on our behalf and have agreed not to do anything until the grant is resolved so that we would then have to reapprove this contract to reflect the discounted amount of the grant, mm -hmm. which they've agreed to, we're, we're good with. So the first point in time here, it says upon grant date, AT&T will incur startup charges and they're gonna ask us within 90 days of the grant date for roughly right a half million dollars, okay? So, just as a backdrop. So I put together some options. 
And as Linda indicated, the town share of this project is $2,227,343 without any grants and without the 55000 roughly right from the county. Right. All right. So our initial payment to AT&T is due 90 days after contract signing. That really should say uh, grant date. It was contract signing at one time. So it would be grant date. Mm -hmm. um, I'll sign the contract itself at the January meeting. <clears throat> they will bill us 90 days after the grant date. So it, we are anticipating the grant decision sometime February, March. Yes. Probably, probably March. All right, February, March. So my date here moved a little bit. <clears throat> but let's just say I sign it in January. The contract signing date is 90 days after grant date. So we'd actually have to move this back a little bit. So we would be getting our first invoice in April, right? Roughly right, somewhere in there, April to May. At which time we'd owe $556,836. Now, after that initial payment, we owe nothing to AT&T until they have completed 25% of their customer locations. Right. And it's our understanding that as they complete these locations, those locations will be uh, connected. They'll be hot, right? The timeline in the RFP, if you caught that, had a lot of 1 to 6, 1 to 12, 1 to 24, etc. But if you look at the timeline and say roughly right, it's one to six months for project design, and then they're going to order materials, and then they're going to get construction. So based on that timeline, it's more than likely to me that no payment will be due until mid, early to mid 2025, no second payment, mm -hmm. right? So again, you're referencing Exhibit B in the contract. Correct. Yeah. That payment would be 417627 Now, if you tuned in to the Federal Reserve's most recent meeting, and or, as we did, we asked uh, our local economist. Uh, our committee member. Our committee member, uh, who, whose total job was to be the head uh, economist for, I think, Bank of Chicago? Uh, Northern, Northern Trust. Pardon me? Northern, Northern Trust. Trust. Northern Chicago. Trust. Um, and his job was basically to work with this and present information throughout the, the United States. And Paul we said, Kessler. give us your best guess. And this was actually the night before the federal. Yeah, Paul Castriel. Yeah. Paul Castriel, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. I should have mentioned. That's okay. um, current f federal funds rates around five and a quarter to 5.3%. And it's anticipated that it's going to drop somewhere between three quarters to one and a quarter percent. The Bureau of uh, the uh, Land Commissioner's rate today is six and a quarter. And generally, their rates run about 1% over the federal funds rate. So with all that as a backdrop, <coughs> here's the first one I'll throw out there. The town makes the first payment out of our reserves and designated funds. Now, I've spent time with Amy, and we have enough funds in there that we can pull that payment out all right, of our accounts. Mm -hmm. right? At a point in time in the third or fourth quarter of next year, the town would then apply for a loan to the state, the Bureau of Land Commissioners, to recapture and replenish those funds. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Am I right? In taking this action, there's no loan payment due until March of 2025. That's mm -hmm. the way they work. So there would be no change to the 2024 tax bill due in 25, because we wouldn't have borrowed any money right. that we'd have to repay. Now, if anybody's got something that you think I'm off base, feel free to chime in. Um, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Are you um, talking about using the ARPA? Plan? No, for the first payment, for the payment. we're not. We would so we use, use the ARPA money ARPA and money, our broadband, broadband money, fund, and which then is... take room tax or something yep. else to make it up. Yeah, we have adequate, adequate funds to cover that. Yep. Sure. So in doing this, we'd have no loan payment due until March of 25. There'd be no change. <clears throat> Excuse me. The loan payment amount due in 2025 would be dependent on the term of the loan that we would apply for and have to be paid for out of town funds. So if I go to the Bureau of Land Commissioners and I borrow 555,000, I can borrow for 5, 10, 15, or 20 years. What term I buy is going to determine what our payment might be. Obviously, the benefit to trying to delay this is that the rate Ideally, would drop from six and a quarter, six whatever, 
to perhaps around five. And if you took the example I've given you down here, $557,000 at six and a quarter for 10 years, could be 20, our yearly payment for that loan would be 75,000. If we wait and we're able to take advantage of a reduction, it would drop it to 61,000. Now, obviously we could make that a 15 year or a 20 year loan and just like a car payment, it would decrease the amount out of pocket. <clears throat> Second scenario, which is we borrow all of the money now, and I think actually one or two towns are thinking of doing that, or perhaps have already done that. Um, we could go and ask for, uh, for a loan. Uh, we would not get that um, application in until January of 2024. And the way the commission works, you get a 60-day lock on the interest rate. Well, we know the interest rate's not going to go up, at least now, for another 30 to 60 days because they just had their last meeting. So in doing so, we would start the tax for the loan next year, all right? But we're paying for money we don't need, <clears throat> and we're losing 2 to 3% on what we would get once we stick it in the bank. <clears throat> so it's not the best decision, but if from a comfort perspective, if you like we're covered. nice feeling, we borrow the money, we lose a couple percent while it sits in the bank. So <clears throat> in that scenario, borrowing money first of the year, the whole two million plus at six and a quarter a payment to be 195,000 a year. If we could uh, get it down to five percent, the yearly payment would be 176. So cut save twenty thousand dollars. That's a worst case scenario too, right? Right. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. So, in scenario three, I don't know if it's really a scenario, but the AT&T contract is revised and lowered if we obtain the PSC federal grant. Right. So we put in for how much? I don't even remember. They asked for 816,000. 816,000. Pardon me? 816,000. Yeah. That was AT&T's application. God knows if we would get that, it gets split back between the 70-30 ratio mm -hmm. back to us. And under the contract that we would sign, we've agreed to renegotiate that contract to reflect those savings. Mm -hmm. And of course, that would reflect in all of the numbers that I've just shared with you. <clears throat> if the grant is given, we have two financing options with the state. We could reduce the term of the loan, so take the chunk of money and make the loan 17 years instead of 20, or we could reduce the loan amount, which would impact the yearly loan payments, but still leave us out on a 20-year term. Obviously, we don't know the answer to that until we know whether we get a grant or not. I'm just explaining the options that lay before you. And we'd get new amortization schedules from the land commissioner on those two options. And last part of that is there are options for the town within the DC PL loan program. We could choose to roll, roll the dice by borrowing only as the need arises with the expectation that the rates will continue to decline over the course of the next two years. There is not a limit on the applications, and at a given point in time, we could do a consolidation loan to pay off the higher interest loans. We would need to manage this closely as the loan terms would or should try to have the same term length. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a little messy, but it's another option that lays out there which says we, we are just going to wait and hope that the everybody's interest right and the, comes the interest rates come down, and you know maybe we have one loan at. 5%, maybe we got one at four. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe they all, maybe, I don't know. So before I sign this contract, I need you to digest this and then come back and say, this makes sense or it doesn't, or let the constituents come forward and say, I like it, I don't like it, you know, whatever. And then we can decide to go one way or the other. That was one question I had. <laughs> at what point do we have to think about a referendum? To ask, no. We, no, ask them. no, we have no obligation to do a referendum. No, and, and we have had this on our agenda for God, I can't. Well, not it, not like obligated, but just see if the town want. If the, I, I wouldn't do a referendum want to know no. if yes or no to spend this money, right, on on this project. Okay. Right, so it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Go on the tax roll, and then. It is a lot of money, but it's a huge we benefit. Have, we well, have I mean, yes and no. It's a huge benefit. Not everybody <coughs> is going to benefit from it, obviously. Some people are going to stay with what they have. 
Sure. That's their decision. Well, that's their, it's a, this right. is our decision that we're voting on. So um, my point is we have constituents, we have people, and we look at what we have out in the crowd. We have four people here. Uh, so the, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying that my question is when, at what point do we ever think about a referendum? How many millions of dollars on the tax roll do we think about a referendum? Just a yes or no. I would not go to a referendum. We have the ability at the town to take and do this loan on our own. Oh, I understand and that. No, I'm just I'm giving you also the, for the benefit of whoever listens in. Um, we've made a determination at this point in time that this is the right course of action for us to take for the benefit of the town. To consider going to a referendum would require us to get delay this entire process till next year. And it'll probably end up in the November cycle uh, simply because you can't get that all that through in that particular point in time, which moves <clears throat> everything that we've done to this point in time is basically somewhat of a wasted effort because it would have to continue on. We have to keep in mind that we have publicly talked about this over and over again. Over a year. We've had two meetings uh, where we've had some pretty decent turnout with input from the citizens. Now, I grant you, not everybody had their voice. But <clears throat> I don't think that one of us heard one negative word from those meetings, during those meetings, or after those meetings. If okay. anything, I've heard, how soon can I get this? Mm -hmm. um, it gives a lot of our citizens an alternative that's less expensive. Uh, and from the work that Q's done, uh, the payoff in many of these situations, especially with anyone switching from charter to AT&T, uh, will save 30 to, assuming the rates, 30 to $40 a month, uh, and will obviously get increased service, better service, uh, and people switching from the other choices that are out there. For example, Starlink, uh, your bill, if you switch from Starlink, would probably go from, what, 100 or 125 to to $50 a month. But that's not guaranteed either. So we've no. never had ATT guarantee any rates. No. That's the one that's the one thing that I've had a lot of people say to me is there hasn't been any rate guarantee from ATT well, at all. I thought, There's I thought part of the package is they well they, they listed what their rates were. Right. But it and they did not give a guaranteed rate, which is fine, but it's also considerably much, much lower than even especially what I am paying for selling as is as well. So, I mean, and as for just in my opinion, I mean, we've been going through this thing for what, two years now? At least, maybe even more. Everybody knew that it's gonna eventually come down to the, it, the bill is gonna be on the taxes sooner or later. Anyways, we're gonna try and get as much money as possible. So in this case, I mean, people are gonna be, Taxes are going to eventually go up. Just the way, how or when it's going to go up is based on you and the, the, deciding which plan you're going to do. Honestly, if you could prolong it for at least a year or two, that's great because you're right. As they're saying, they're predicting the interest rates to go down, save as much money to the townspeople as possible. That's just my opinion. <coughs> and the delay also be nice with the reval going through. Well, that was the other thought. Um, to your point, though, of the question on rates, you know, we asked that of AT&T. We asked that of all, everyone that came back in, and they have national rates, and you'd have to look at it. AT&T is putting up 70% of this money. They're going to want to capture as many customers as possible. They're not going to price themselves out of the market. They're going to have all kinds of programs to entice the charter customer and everyone else to migrate as, as soon as they can turn on the, turn the switch on. And if there were cost structures, you can bet your bottom dollar that Charter and the rest of them are going to just mirror where they're at today. I mean, they're all going to do the same basic approach. So, do you have a comment here? Yeah, just, just building on that comment, uh, uh, Mark, uh, a couple things. Number one is, um, as we looked at uh, the areas that are hopefully going to be served, um, the, the challenge with delaying it to say, well, if we don't get the CPF grant, we'll go after the BEAD funding, which is the next federal funding opportunity. If we looked at uh, uh, working with the school district, 61% of, of this vast, Thomas Vest school families in the school district are in the areas that have nothing. 
or, or next to nothing if you consider fixed wireless. So delaying basically um, hurts the people we want to help the most, right? I'm one of them. Right? And, 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 and in good conscience, you know, if we don't get this grant, that's why it's, if we, if we get it, great. If we don't, we have to move forward. Because the other thing we've learned is that in the Public Service Commission's uh, implementation of the BEAD grant funding, um, their uh, guidance is that they're going to do that via auctions. And so they're basically they're taking the control out of the municipality. So they'll look at areas that need broadband, and they'll, they, the state, is going to define the areas, and then they're going to solicit bids. So in, in those cases, we may, you know, a, a municipality may end up with a provider that they don't necessarily like, but they put in a great bid to the state, and the state's going to say, sold. Yep. And you guys go implement it. So uh, we lose a lot of control with the bead funding. Not to mention, it's not gonna. It's it'll start in the in the summertime, but you're yes. probably not gonna get the money maybe until the end of the year. So again, we're we're holding the folks that need it the most hostage. So I um, I I applaud you know the the chairman's uh, um, you know recommendation of moving forward so that we can help the people that need it most. And I think through the public hearings, whatever provider anyone uses in the town of Sebastopol today, they are going to save money and their payback is going to be, in most cases, um, less than a half a year relative to the tax levy. So I think we're, we're trying to manage their dollars properly, and I think for those folks that are have a hard time maybe looking at affordability, um, AT&T has, has the best um, um, low-cost affordable ability plans for those folks that um, are eligible for them, yep. you know, probably better than any other competitors. So we have flexibility in that way to help those families that need it the most. So um, I, I would encourage the, the town support. Thank you. Uh, um, as far as the financing options, um, I like the scenario number one. At first glance, you know, we're just seeing this tonight, right. but you know, making the payment out of out of our reserves, uh, I think we can cover that without a problem. I don't know why we want to borrow money when we don't need to borrow money and pay interest. So, you know, on a need it's a, it's a basis, comfort, it's a comfort, it's a comfort thing. thing. That's yeah. it. Uh, I, the board is I, the board of land commissioners. I think they're always going to be out there. It's always going to be available to us based on our credit history. So I don't see any problem with <coughs> borrowing as we need. And I do believe that interest rates will go down. So. That's true. Well. Unless somebody has more questions on the financing, my take on it is we will go through this once again in January and decide where we're going to go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and at the January meeting, we've done that, then I'll sign the contract and get it off to at and and then all we need to do is hold our fingers and hope that the, the grant somehow or another works in our favor. If it does, we, we get a substantial discount. Unfortunately, we also had three be uh, strikes that Three, two or three strikes that we struck, struck out or two or three times, but maybe they'll feel guilty about uh, denying us in the past. So, all right. anything else on this? No. It will be back in January. Okay. Um, next item is the clerk treasurer, who is very concerned about my not having a contract renewal. I thought you took care of that in public participation. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You just keep going. <laughs> I don't think there should be any surprises in here. This is, I don't know, this is what we did with her uh, at the yeah, budget hearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything else is pretty much status quo. <clears throat> Amy, would you like to comment on anything relative to this prior to our? The only thing that changed is the um, the wage. That is all that changed. Yep. Okay. Anyone have a question on this? If not, a motion to approve? It would be my pleasure to move to approve our uh, contract, our annual contract with our clerk treasurer. Thank you, Amy, for everything you do. You've really taken on extra projects this past year. It's, um, you're amazing. Yes. Thank you. I will wholly, wholeheartedly do a second to that motion. I hardly got a chance to say we had a first. <laughs> <laughs> first by Linda, second by Jeannie. Any further discussion? 
I think oh, enough has been said. <laughs> All right, I would Don't agree. Be salty. All those in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. No, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. <laughs> Election officials, the Republican Party has given us a list of people they would like us to consider for election inspector nomination. As I understand it, it's just a motion to approve, Amy, is that correct? That's correct. Um, the Republicans gave a list, the Democrats gave a list, and there was only one on that list, and then I gave a list of unaffiliated people that we use. So all it needs to be done is um, a motion to approve the 2024-25 election cycle election um, officials. All right, sounds good. Did you just make that motion? I'll make no, that motion. I cannot do that. <laughs> I will make that motion, which right. I just said. A <laughs> motion by Mark. Second by. Second by Linda Wait. Second by Linda Wait. <laughs> it's a good thing this is the last meeting this year. All mm -hmm. those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. It's Thank you. Like we haven't done this 10 or 11 times so far. We're also in the street now. All right. And so down. Ah, this. No, I was wondering where that was. I just wanted. Okay, financial reports. You have in front of you the account balances. So you have the budget versus actual January through November. And you have the transaction list by date. If you have any questions on those, now would be the perfect time to ask them. And if not, I'm sure the treasurer might have some comment. Do you, Amy? I do. The tax bills, or what I like to call them, the town's Christmas cards, were sent out a week ago, and we have been receiving uh, payments already. Um, we will be, we have, or we will be receiving um, October's room tax payment this week, uh, which amounted roughly to twenty thousand more dollars. And I did move $100,000 from the room tax revenue um, to, which is also known as cash applied, to pay for some of the road construction this year. So some of that cash applied is being used. Okay. Any comments from anyone? Hearing none, we need a motion to approve the financial reports, put them on file. I'll make a motion to approve the financial report. Okay. Motion by Derek, second by second. Second by Mark. Approve financial reports for November 2023. All those in favor. Merry Signi Christmas, Jim. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Thank you. Next, approval of the vouchers, bills, and claims November 28th through December 18th. I'll make a motion to approval of vouchers, bills, and claims November 28th, 2023 through December 18th, 2023. Second. Motion by Mark, second by Jeannie. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Good. County board report by this District 14 supervisor. Green killing this. That would be Mr. Zettel. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, uh, I'll try to keep it brief uh, just in light of the heavy agenda that you've had so far. Uh, from the last uh, monthly meeting of the county board you, in November, uh, the, the main topic obviously was the budget, and, I, and you've probably seen a lot of information in there already. Uh, I think the, the clear highlights are the, the tax rate of uh, $2.61 per thousand of equalized value. Uh, that's versus the previous year of $3.10, which is a negative, you know, 15.95% reduction. Um, a lot of that has to do to the substantial increase, you know, 22% and some change of equalized value for the county. Um, you know, the good news is that helps us on a tax rate reduction basis. You know, challenges that uh, makes our, our uh, affordable housing uh, uh, even more challenging. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, other uh, couple items to note is this budget also includes substantial investment. Uh, and updating uh, county employees' uh, salary to, to make, remain competitive. So that's a, a, a huge increase here. About 37% of the, the county's budget is, is uh, compensation and benefits. Uh, in addition to that, um, there is a, a substantial increase in sales tax applied. 
uh, to the tax levy of about $2.1 uh, million. They budget a certain amount of sales tax. And the goal is to try to keep that conservative, right? You don't want to, you know, bet the farm that you're going to have high sales tax and then you have a huge shortfall. But the last couple of years, there's been, you know, substantially higher uh, sales tax volume than what they planned. Uh, in subsequent budgets, they're going to try to close that gap so they don't have this overage. That that tax uh, increment isn't applied to the next year's budget. It's kind of two years forward. So uh, the, the tax surplus that we actually had, sales tax surplus we had the year before, is being applied in this year's uh, budget. So that's you know, one of the things is we're, we're fortunate that we have the, the sales tax benefits and increases that we've had. Uh, and I think there's some talk that that, that might go down with some of the inflationary pressures uh, that we have. Um, it's interesting when you look at, to some extent, uh, lead, I don't want to say leading indicators, but indicators of of traffic and other things we've we've seen from tourism zone, right? Some of the uh, uh, revenue has gone, lodging revenue has gone down. Where you know folks are tight on money, you know, lot, you know, vacations, etc., are discretionary value or discretionary amount. Uh, we actually see some of those trends actually highlighted in uh, things such as E911 calls um, and uh, and uh, uh, EMS. Uh, Volume, you know, a lot of that is reflective of you have less people in a county, there's less accidents, you know, less, you know, calls for help, those sorts of things. So we've seen some, I'll call it uh, return to normalcy, you know, uh, you know, pre-pandemic relative to, to trends and those sorts of volume. So that's one of the things we want to be careful about, you know, being too bullish about sales tax and getting that up for extra revenue. Um, there were no substantive comments or, or other uh, uh, feedback during the, the, the hearing on the budget, so it was uh, uh, approved. Uh, as part of our meetings towards the end of the year, at, at the November meetings, uh, they also, um, by, uh, by law, we review uh, the results of the 2023 Door County Fair. The, the Fair Board meets in conjunction with the County Board, um, and we uh, approve motions and get feedback on the fair. Overall, the fair was, was a positive success uh, monetarily as well as just with uh, attendance, even though they had a couple uh, starting issues with some of the, the unplanned rain, but with some of the bands and such that they had booked uh, and the events, uh, it turned out very positive. Um, in addition, uh, per Wisconsin state statutes, we reviewed any uh, the rules of order and the organization of the county board. Uh, how the subunits are created and, man and managed, and the, door and the duties of each of the county board subunits, and those were also reviewed and uh, reapproved uh, at that meeting. Um, relative to things that are, I know of a specific interest that I want to highlight uh, relative to the town of Sevastopol, uh, there were substantial discussions um, raised at the um, budget workshop in September. Um, particularly by me regarding adding additional resources to the land use department, uh, in particular with the challenges of enforcement that we have. Um, and that led to um, uh, an, an action where the uh, county administrator, uh, they hired a consultant uh, to look at uh, efficiencies and other workload associated with land use, uh, with res especially with respect to, to managing uh, the, the ordinances. And that report is uh, due by the end of this year, uh, by which we will then review it in the resource planning uh, committee uh, meeting and, there, and then therefore also with the admin committee to see how they will f uh, fund it. And there's been a commitment to fund a resource, whether it's an LTE or a full-time employee um, based on the findings for this report. So uh, we'll keep you um, uh, price that, Mr. Chairman, because I know that's uh, uh, of interest to you, and I, I share your concern about making sure that we uh, uh, provide the necessary resources uh, for the land use team. Um, in addition, I also want to want to make uh, one comment, just to kind of provide a shout out to um, our county uh, broadband coordinator. Uh, as part of our grant, pr uh, the grant process uh, for the uh, capital project funds to, to, that uh, AT and T applied for. Um, there was an objection made by the incumbent cable provider that said that they were going to provide service in areas that they already covered. Um, and as part of that, the town responded uh, to that 
uh, objection. Uh, and in addition to that, the county also provided a separate letter uh, uh, with uh, substantiating some other data. And uh, I just want to uh, you know, you know, publicly thank them uh, for providing that extra level of support. Uh, the county has engendered uh, a ton of credibility with the uh, Wisconsin Public Service Commission and their broadband office. Uh, especially when you look at things such as the Wiser survey data. If you look at the Wiser survey data, they have been making recommendations of how they're going to implement broadband in the state of Wisconsin based on some of those actual uh, hardcore findings. And Door County represents 40% of the state's data. So, yeah. you know, so when you look at that, um, you know, like the county has uh, developed a lot of street cred. Uh, uh, as part of um, our efforts, and a lot of that credit goes to uh, uh, Jessica Hatch, who authored um, the the letter uh, in support of our efforts in the town's basketball. I just want to so I just want to acknowledge uh, her work and and the and the work of the GIS team uh, for all the broadband efforts uh, that they've done behind the scenes. So a uh, big thank you to them. With that, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Uh, only one comment. Uh, the RPC thing, I had opportunity last week to talk to <clears throat> Ken Pavich myself. <clears throat> this has been an issue with me forever that they haven't had good enforcement and follow-up, especially on conditional uses and stuff. I mean, our most recent example is right down the road before you get to the farm where they, they're having storage unit sales every weekend. Mm -hmm. We, we had to turn that in to the county. They supposedly have written a letter, although we haven't seen it yet, mm -hmm. saying you can't do that. There's all these restrictions. But in the meantime, the sale continues. Um, and there are issues with tree plantings. I mean, it's just a, a myriad of things. And we, with Hugh's help and, and just raising this issue whenever I can, said so we, we have to address this because we're really shorting the townspeople when we approve a conditional use and there's no follow-up and follow-through, exactly. you know, we're, we're stiffing the, the people that have to live there. there. So uh, I appreciate the push by both of our supervisors to continue that effort. And uh, and on uh, recognizing some help there too, Hugh, you've yep. been a great assistance, of great assistance to the town on our broadband effort. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, and, and to the referendum question, you'd have to live under a rock to not know that we were going to try and do broadband. Yeah. I, I hope that there isn't anybody that's really surprised or taken back. We're going to do what's best for the town at this point. So, thank you, Hugh. Did I make oh. one comment? Oh, go ahead. Just, uh, um, regarding our fair, the Door County Fair, I always make it a point to go to the fair. Um, Paving that midway was the best yeah. thing they ever did mm -hmm. because yeah. it always seemed we have, seems we have at least one or two downpours during the mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. I feel so bad for them. But paving that midway and, you know, it's clean. Yeah. It's, you're not afraid to take your kids there, at least during the daytime. I don't normally go at night. So um, my thanks to the fair board and the families that put the effort into the exhibits and mm -hmm. the cleanliness and just the setup and the organization and everything. So thank you. I'll provide that feedback. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Anything else? All right. Thank uh, you. you have a Th thank you. Copy of Door County Inspections Monthly Billing, the last, uh, no, there'll be one more <clears throat> in your packet <clears throat> and in your correspondence, uh, you have information on oh, this is the part that we talked about already uh, destination Sturgeon Bay what they're getting funded next year uh, we, have you seen anything in the back from her because she said they were going to get another draft um, on what was that? Camera? no I have not Sturgeon. I also I asked, asked for, for it and I haven't gotten okay. it yet and she now did she you take a look in. at the draft guide Amy yes because the one that you had sent me. Right. right. So, Sevastopol, we asked for specific pages, but I noticed that there's Nassawapi is also included, and it mm -hmm. seems to me. Oh, you mean separate pages for them as well? Well, maybe a half page or something like that. The way I, that I, I, I don't the have way enough. that it was explained to me is, well, you get two pages. Mm -hmm. I have not heard back. Okay. I have not either. I can email well, Let's tomorrow. keep after it and see what, what happens. Um, 
We also have a copy of a request from Cindy Forster to do some riprap on our street. Uh, a copy of the communication from Northern Door. And I, Derek, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this, but is there anything here that we need to be concerned about relative to radios for EMRs, etc.? All from Greg. Yeah, from Northern Door Communications. I think it's just more le him letting us know that he's still available. That's what's kind of right. But, yeah, yeah, that's why Because if you make the phone call, it sounds like he's that's no it longer. To me. Well, if there's something that we need to do, Derek, would you circle back with me? All right, or Amy. Mm -hmm. um, copy of the fire contract that has been now approved by both of us is in your folder. Um, municipal forfeitures. Uh, this was interesting. We finally found out how much of the forfeiture that we actually <laughs> assigned we get. Out of a $500 fine, $250 goes to 84 different organizations <laughs> and we get 250 Is that about right? Roughly right. Roughly right. Okay. And we're still in the process with two specific properties of issuing uh, citations and continuing to, uh, to work with some property owners. Um, a little note here from someone regarding the Christmas party. What a good time was had by all. It was. Great time. Um, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, announcements for next month. Our Board of Supervisors meeting January 15th. Our town financial audit starts the 17th through the 19th. The Board of Supervisors meeting in February will be February 19th at 7 p.m. We will bring back for next month the AT&T contract and the billing and, and the financing of that. Um, I recognized earlier this evening both Linda Waite and Amy Flock for their outstanding efforts on behalf of the town for the great Christmas party that we've had uh, last this last week, week ago, the first, excuse me, two weeks ago. Uh, we had a full house. Everybody had a great time. Uh, a lot of our businesses contributed gifts. And when we, Santa showed up, I mean, it was, it was good all the way around. Uh, they do an outstanding job above and beyond. And we thank them for their efforts. And Laddie tells me he's got a video of Amy climbing up the Christmas tree, putting on the lights. Is that right? Oh, not quite. Oh, not quite. Okay, so I'm... we can do that. Oh, okay. So, um, if you want to show your video, it will be the last thing we will do before Derek gets the real favorite part of the video. The meeting. There it is. In case you didn't come to our Christmas party, you get to see the tree. And I would suggest that you try and put it on your calendar for next year because a great time was had by all. It was. So, I was here for. With that, a motion to adjourn would be appropriate. I'm, I'll move. You're going to move. No, I'm going to move. All right. I'll make that motion. He's going to make the motion. Derek, I'll move to second that. A motion. I mean, a motion. <laughs> yeah, motion. motion. We have a motion by Derek. <laughs> Which is surprising. He hardly ever makes a motion. And we have a second by Mark, who only acknowledges all of Derek's motions. To adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Merry we are adjourned Christmas, and Merry Christmas. Everyone. Merry Christmas.